Hi, so my name is Andrew Moore. I'm the CEO of Pan Intelligence. We're a data analytics software company based in Leeds. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about embedding analytics internationally and how we at Pan Intelligence are helping global technology companies to give better insights to non technical people. Um, so Pan Intelligence was born originally out of a fintech organization. We were a business intelligence tool that was designed for anybody to be able to build their own insights. So think data visualization, think reporting, think machine learning for non-technical people. So we do three things, but we do that by enabling those companies that have that data. So software vendors predominantly, and often cloud software vendors to unlock that capability of giving end users the ability to self-serve. So build a report, build a data visualization, build a machine learning model for themselves to predict and automate decisions, all embedded within SaaS vendors platforms. Now, we know that the data analytics market is growing rapidly, and many of the McKinsey reports and other reports that are coming out now show that the recovery from COVID will be digitally and data driven. And we've seen all too often that actually our consumption of online technology to manage our working environments, uh, entertainers during this period has accelerated. So cloud is the new normal from a, a data collection point of view. And we're really trying to enable those people that have that data stored in those environments um, to give them the tools and capabilities to give more people access uh, in an easier way. We as a company have been growing. Uh, we concluded our Series A uh, funding round in 2019, so we're scaling our journey. And part of that has been expanding and reaching out to international organizations. And uh, we've been growing our base of customers in the US, opening our office in Boston uh, earlier in 2019. And we've been trading and working quite a lot, actually, in the Netherlands over the last uh, 12 months. So companies like Book, who provide point of sale, SaaS based, cloud based point of sale solutions to the uh, to the retail sector in Holland is a big partner of ours. And um, they're enabling small pop up startup uh, independent retailers to have point of sale solutions that they can consume on a laptop or mobile device. And we are the data insight engine for that kind of retail economy that has obviously faced a great deal of challenge over that period. Exact has been a partner of ours for a number of years. That's a very well-known accounting platform provider in Holland. And again, we worked with them on a hack um, a year or so ago uh, to predict uh, invoices that are most likely to not get paid so that those teams could take interventions. But we work, work across a whole range of industries, helping sectors like healthcare, education, construction, um, to unlock that data and make it available to more people. So what is it we do? Well. I talked about those three things sort of reporting, data visualization and prediction. And the market at the moment is really complicated. There are a whole range of different tools and technologies at that hindsight reporting stage, insight, data visualization and consumption of real time data and foresight, prediction, machine learning. There's a range of tools. So it's complex and disconnected. So we have all of those three things in one technology. So that enables us to give anybody that has data a single application to do all those three things. And it's absolutely designed to be embedded. So when I talk about embedded internationally, I mean embedded in your platform, in your infrastructure, not alongside, but inside for you to switch on that capability. So we make that really easy. It's a usage based model. And we do that quickly because it's a completely no code application. You don't need any code or to write a line of code to deployers, nor do your users need to understand code to be able to use the technology. So simple, powerful and quick to give these insights over whatever data that you have, whether that is open data or data you're collecting or different data sets. It can be a combination of sources that we can connect into to unlock that capability. And like I said, this is usage based. So for anybody that's looking to do um, some data exploration quickly, um, this is not going to be a significant overhead for that project or that application. This is based on how much it's used and what it's being used for. And we work with technology companies like AWS, we're a partner, but also Azure and Google Cloud and private cloud. So we're able to be deployed in a whole range of environments and work with tools like Snowflake, Redshift, and all sorts of other integration partners. So we'll connect into whatever you have and make it easy for you to do. 
So business intelligence and data exploration is changing. It's changing because of the volumes of data, but also the users the, and consumers of that data are wanting to be empowered to truly self-serve. So we're really part of that kind of um, migration from what I would call legacy business intelligence to the new kind of consumption of data that is empowered for citizen data scientists. So if you think about the no-code revolution, this is really about citizen developers and citizen data scientists, non-technical people being empowered to access data. And there are a number of different use cases that we can give you examples of. An example here I've got is around construction. Um, this was a great use case from um, going into COVID where they needed to manage the people that were on site um, during that period for social distancing, but also predicting any risks that may occur from not having the right amount of people on site from a health and safety point of view. And two of our partners, BioSite, that do an access and control system for fingerprint recognition, and Notify, which have a health and safety application. Both of those were using our technology to pivot new use cases around COVID to predict and schedule resources for social distancing and also predict risks based on those kind of capacity constraints and that kind of requirement for social distancing. So you can really take the data that you already have and change that for different outcomes using a technology like ours very quickly. And the last example I'll give is one that really brings that kind of predictive machine learning to life. As we all know, um, we're desperate to go back out to restaurants. I certainly can't wait to be able to go and, and have someone cook me a meal for a change. And white label loyalty are transforming the way in which incentivize, they can incentivize people to return to those restaurants and choose those um, restaurants as places to go and have a meal. And they're doing that through a loyalty scheme, which is predicting the most likely incentive that a person may use to return to that restaurant. And that's powerful because it's using the data about people's preferences and choices and behaviours to give them an offer they're most likely to execute on, really helping to drive those, um, those parts of our economy which are really needing a lift from uh, out the other side of COVID. So using the data that they already have to, to drive the best, um, best intervention, the best incentive into people's hands that may help that that uh, restaurant or that retailer to, to come out of this period of difficulty. So I hope that gives you a perspective on how we embed analytics internationally. Like I said, we work globally, but we do have a number of partners in Holland. If anybody would like to speak to me after this, please connect to me on LinkedIn. I have an unusual name, but if you type Zandra Moore into LinkedIn and Pan Intelligence, you'll find it easily. Always connect. I'm happy to have a chat to you. Outside of that, go on to panintelligence.com. There's a try pie area. You can have a go with the software. And if you'd like to actually get your hands on it, again, let us know and we'd love to be in touch with you. Thanks for your time and any questions, I'd love to have them. Um, that was a fantastic talk and thanks for joining us for, for uh, q and I've, I've got two questions that I'd like to uh, go with you. One is, around what it's like to scale a data business in the north of England. And then the second part is um, how you, you talked about how the, the, um, the data um, analysis uh, segment or industry is fragmented at the moment and how it's coming together. So I guess there's two questions. Um, how, what is it like to, to grow a business in this part of the world? And the second bit is what do you see happening next in your um, industry sector? Cheers, Paul. Well, I'll, I'll tackle the first one because um, it has to be said, uh, when we started growing Pan Intelligence, um, we, we spun it out in 2014, actually, from a larger software business. You know, there is a, a, a vibrant tech ecosystem here. It has been for a long time. That business was established 25 years ago and we were incubated in that. So there was a lot of talent on the doorstep for us here and we grew that um, from six to, to 40 people um, in a matter of four years, which was great. You know, we had no shortage of, of, of people to bring into the company. Um, we have found that um, certainly uh, there's no shortage of developer or, 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 or digital uh, marketing or sales execs in this region that there seems to be, you know, that seems to be um, easy to find. And actually, we do have some fantastic universities locally, which feed that pipeline, as well as some really great kind of retraining organizations locally, like North Coders, who retrain return to workers, which we've had probably 50% um, of our development 
workforce has come from retrainers um, who are wow. sort of mid-career, which um, you know has also really helped with our diversity as well, because you're dealing with people that perhaps didn't initially choose to get into things like development or technical roles, but come back into that later in their career. So, so yeah, so I think there's a, a whole range of different pipeline um, uh, organisations providing talent into the region. So no, it's been it's been easy to scale here. And I think on top of that, we've got a fantastic digital ecosystem around things like the the, the digital festival that that runs locally and hundreds of events every year. Um, that's really helped the rest of the, the businesses in the area sort of get to know who's who and what's what and work more collaboratively so that you're actually supporting one another on your doorstep as opposed to perhaps mm. reaching out further afield for things that you can you can get on your doorstep you just didn't know they were there so no it's not been a not been a challenge at all um and you know we've got the benefit of being on the uh, the edge of the countryside and having a fabulous quality of life up here so I wouldn't build a business anywhere else frankly fantastic and I guess, I guess that that message especially to our sponsors um uh, from the Netherlands is that when, when you're talking to your um, startups and scale-ups who want to move to the UK or invest in the UK, that um, it's not just London. Um, North England is a, is a great place to, to establish a technology business as well. Um, and then the, the second question um, really is about, uh, so data is talked about a lot, but actually what is happening in the in that, that you, especially your sphere of building products that use data all the time yeah I, I mean to be fair I think the the data analytics and business intelligence space which is probably where we really evolved from has done a very good job of, of, of um, creating um, a, a need in the market to uh, by understanding what what's not been un, not been tapped into from a value perspective so people understand what business intelligence tools are they understand the value of reporting and data visualization but actually in 20 years um, I would think the majority of organizations are still deeply frustrated that they're not getting access to the information they want um, in a simple way whether that's just what happened yesterday never mind what's happening now so I think the data market has, you know, there's been an awful lot of discussion, a lot of innovation around it, but I still think um, there's a huge amount of frustration because leveraging those technologies to drive real value out of that data still seems harder than it should be. So we've really tried to tap into that as a business, really focus on, you know, why do we still have this problem where we've got all these tools, all these technologies, and yet majority of people don't seem to be able to kind of extract value from data. So we've really focused on that and that kind of empowering the domain experts, the non-technical people to be able to, you know, build what they need for themselves without depending on specialists like data scientists or BI people or, or, or people with technical skills that have to go and do some clever stuff about connecting to data. So I think there's still huge amounts of value in data that is not unlocked. And, you know, yes, there's a lot of technology out there, but I think it's still too too difficult for most people to use. It's still too technical. And actually, we, we need to keep um, front of mind that the best people to make decisions are still the people at the front line that are probably the ones that are impacted by those decisions and can inform the data itself around whether or not the data sets are valid for that purpose, right? You know, so whether that's bias or just, you know, have we attributed the right context to this to make it a worthwhile decision? So yeah. you've still got to empower the people at the front line. And, and that for me has been the problem we've been trying to solve for the last 10 years is, you know, this is still too difficult. We need to make this easier and, and, and empowering everybody. Um, so real kind of democratization is a big, big word, I suppose, for it. But, you know, just just uh, enabling enabling that kind of uh, ecosystem. And that's why we set up like the No Code Lab, which is another organization that, that we run inside Pan Intelligence as a as a community of, of, of technologies that, that really aim to do that, really enable the, um, the non-techies to build build what they need for themselves yeah. to empower them. Yeah. And fantastic. And, and and making things simple is really hard, right? Isn't it? That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Um, but yeah, but, 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 but and, and experts always are saying, oh, yeah, but it's more complicated than that. But, but sometimes it's not, is it? Simple, yeah. And, you know, I, I hate this phrase, but it's it always serves us really well, quick and dirty. You know, I mean, quite frankly, sometimes it doesn't have to be, you're not building models that have to be 98% um, effective. Sometimes if it tells you something useful that you can take action on, even if it's 70% um, accurate, that can be good enough for the person that's got to make a decision. You know, we have to not try and be too obsessive about having high, high levels of accuracy. If it tells you something useful that you didn't know before, if it's something that you want to then take action on, actually maybe that's good enough. And yeah. um, and I think there's a, that line between, you know, um, pure data science and actually just getting 
useful data into the hands of people that can do something with that quickly um, and making sure that we, we're striking that balance properly. And, and I think we're trying to move towards the getting, getting insight into people's hands quickly so they can be the ones to decide whether that's useful or not. Fantastic. I think that's a great point to end on. Um, you know, getting data into people's hands to make decisions quickly um, and getting things done is definitely something that we uh, ODLEs would, would advocate for all the time. So thanks very much for joining us, Sandra. Um, it's, it's been amazing to have